too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best you know the worst Welcome everyone to AppSec Virtual. This is our first big AppSec Virtual event we've ever held, so please bear with us. Hopefully you've actually had a chance to look at all of the different sessions that we've had um, and enjoyed some of the training that we've been putting on as well. Okay, my name is Andrew Vanderstock. I'm the new Executive Director. However, I have been around OWASP for a very long time. Um, I actually joined OWAS at the end of 2001. I wasn't here at the very beginning, but I knew who was. Um, I was on the global board between 2015 and 2018, and I've become the executive director as, the, as of the end of June this year. I used to lead the OWAS developer guide, um, and indeed, if you want to help them, they're, they, they would like some help. Um, I am the current co-lead of the OWAS top 10, along with three other folks. And I'm also the co-lead of the OWASP Application Security Verification Standard, which is the actual standard you should use. Um, my favorite pastimes are being with my family, playing Elite Dangerous, and annoying my cat. OWASP has grown, even in this difficult year. We now have over 280 chapters. We have over 60 corporate members. We have over 3,200 active members. We have over 65,000 people actually talk to us on a regular basis um, in terms of people who can come to our meetings at, um, in Meetup. And we have over 190 active source, um, open source projects on GitHub. It only costs 50 bucks a year to be a member of OWASP and I would highly recommend it. I'm actually a lifetime member and without a doubt, it's one of the best things I've ever done for my career. So, if you, it's not too late, you can still register to view all of the 60 plus on-demand sessions. You can actually watch them at any point. Um, you don't actually have to wait for um, a particular time like we would in a real physical conference. Um, please do visit the Expo Hall. Our sponsors have swag, prizes. Um, they are looking to um, have chats with you if you want. 
Um, but fundamentally, it's the equivalent of like the little tables that are in the expo halls in our normal one. We also have a career fair this coming Friday. I would strongly recommend if you're in the market for a new position, um, do pop in. There's at least eight um, companies who are trying to recruit. And I'm, you know, this is an industry that has almost 0% unemployment. So I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. So where are we going? So this is the big thing on everyone's mind. How is OWASP going to get going um, and get back to normal? Obviously 2020 has had a difficult start. Um, we're all looking forward to the end of COVID. We're all looking forward to being able to be in person again. And so for us, we need to get back to our knitting. If we just simply chose to become small OWASP, like literally just don't do a thing for a year or two, I think we would have missed the opportunity for some key reform. And in fact, before I joined, there was a lot of community dissent with things that weren't quite going well. And so what we've done is to try to turn this around. And because we are trying to do a survive and then a thrive um, and then a refocus on mission, what we're trying to do is get to a place where we can actually say at the end of COVID, once we're back on our feet, we'll be a much stronger, more diverse organization. For a start, it's very unlikely that the US will be the, the place in which OWASP re-emerges, if you like, just simply because of the way that COVID has been handled here. In many cases, people won't be able to travel to the US, and in many cases, the US, uh, US people will not be able to travel to other countries for a while. So even if other countries are reopening, we won't be able to go there. So we need to actually make sure that we're truly a global organization. So we need to refocus on this mission. Our mission is to help developers build secure applications. This coming January at the actual board face-to-face, um, -face, which I'm planning, I want them to reimagine OWASP as a DevSecOps organization so that everything we do is available to developers in a developer-first and developer-centric way. To do that, we can't do this as a foundation. My staff are here to enable the mission. They are not here to actually do the mission. And that is a, that is a fundamental change to where we were at the beginning of this year. So not only do we need to survive and actually make it through COVID, we need to refocus on mission and through that we can thrive. So how do we do these things? We do it through community reform. The way that I phrase this when we've been doing the reform is by the community, for the community. We want to make sure that the community is the people in charge and running the actual things that they want to do. And they do that through understanding what our mission is, through the board strategy, and then they have committees. The committees themselves are the way that we work. But the community is made up of you you and our members and the developers and the community at large, um, organizations, governments, those sorts of folks who need OWAS to be a sound and strong organization. Very many organizations rely upon things like the OWAS top 10, the testing guide, the mobile testing guide, OWAS SAP, and many other types of projects that we put on. Without these, we don't have the brand recognition um, of a world leader in application security. And we are a world leader in application security. And we do that through community. The community elects the global board. We're in the middle of an election. If you haven't yet voted, I would strongly recommend you do so. They are your representatives. Check to make sure that they have the same vision that you do for OWASP and please elect the board that you want to see. There are three positions up this year. And I would strongly recommend you look through the bios, look through the videos and the answers that they've given and make sure that they reflect your values and then vote for them. Lastly, we can got essentially committees. We've been busy setting them up and those committees are, we're probably going to have a members committee. It might be the chapters and members committee, but the chapters committee is being reformed in terms of um, helping re-establish chapters, regional chapters, student chapters, and actually doing things such as making sure that the chapter policy is sound, making sure that the chapter handbook is updated. We've also got some massive finance reform, which we'll talk about soon, 
that will cha fundamentally change the way that chapters work globally. At the moment, only around 50, 50 odd chapters can spend money. Uh, the goal of the finance reform is to allow all chapters, regardless of what they believe they have, to be able to spend. We, are, we formed a projects um, committee. This is, committee is designed to promote the building, creation, and good life cycle of projects. OWASP is famous for its projects. If you actually type in OWASP and whatever it might be, in all likelihood, you'll see the OWASP top 10 and the OWASP cheat sheet series. Those two projects in themselves dominate the first two or three pages of results for OWASP. And this shows you that we are used extremely heavily in the community. Outreach, we want to reach developers. We cannot do this by staying in our own little bubble. We all agree with each other that application security is incredibly important, but we need to reach new people, new students, new people who are coding but don't yet know about application security or privacy. We need to catch these folks and we do that through the outreach committee. Recently, we had the WEA committee rename itself to the WEA Diversity and Inclusion Committee. They will be helping us with everyone from early stage careers um, those who are actually um, obviously women in application security and also making sure that underserved communities such as those in African, India, uh, you know, Latin America and other places that are completely underserved. An, an example of this is that many years ago, I did some work for a Vietnamese company and they didn't have any resources at all in their local language to understand how application security worked. This is the function of the WEA diversity inclusion, helping people who currently are locked out of our industry to become included. We will be much stronger for it. And well, realistically, without the next generation of folks coming aboard, we are not going to have a, a long-term profession. We need diversity more than almost every other one of these things. It's central to our, our mission. We are reforming events. Events used to be tied to chapters. Soon events will be their own thing. Events are literally going to become um, anyone of any of these types of things like members, projects, chapters, outreach, diversity, um, education. They can all then run events. This means that there's only one type of event and that is going to be called AppSec Days. This will make it a lot simpler for people to run AppSec Days, local events, and obviously our global um, events. The strategy for this is to make it so simple to run an event that everyone should be able to do so. So instead of having 20 to 30 regional events a year, we could easily have hundreds and that's where we need to scale to. And that's why we're establishing an events committee and to help you run your own local events. The education committee was formed recently and they are working on a tertiary and an industry syllabus. The tertiary syllabus will be available as more or less a curriculum, which is more or less like a, an academic framework for what should be taught. Um, the industry curriculum will be more along the lines of the sorts of things that you might see uh, out there being advertised as being secure coding or similar types of training. We wanna make sure that when people teach OWASP materials, that they have the right information. And that's why we have the education committee helping us. I also want to charge them with helping high school students get into our industry and get prepared to do software engineering courses with a security bend. Without that pipeline, we're not going to have the next generation in our profession and we need to make sure that pipeline is fully primed. Lastly, we are in the process of establishing a corporate advisory committee. This committee will help uh, our corporate members and sponsors advise the board on the best way to work with industry for both sponsorship, fundraising, but also what policies or bylaws or what um, types of sponsorship they would like to see. At the moment, we'd ask them through town halls and through direct you know, interactions what they would like, but I think we're missing an opportunity here to learn more about how we can better integrate with the, uh, the corporate industry. To do this, we need to have some anti-competitive um, protections. Um, we will get that done soon. It is coming. So the other parts of the reforms are fundraising, donations, awards, scholarships, expenses, grants, events, and travel. 
as you can see, this is the biggest reform in OWASP history. And if we get it all done by the end of next year, I'll be extraordinarily happy. We're going to talk about some of these in more detail in the next couple of slides. So finance reform. When we first got going, OWASP was run on an oily rag, literally no money whatsoever for the first three or four years. Until the foundation was established in 2004, whatever funds were coming in were basically being funded by the leaders themselves, and that was it. But when we started to run events such as AppSec EUs and whatnot, we needed to have a foundation. And so that was set up by Jeff Williams and Dave Wickers back in 2004. Back then, we had a very simple finance mechanism, and over time it has grown and got crusty. And unfortunately, it's got to the point now that certain chapters have more money than the foundation actually has. And the reason why this has occurred is that unfortunately, they were able to get a large percentage of all of the income of the foundation, but very little way to actually spend it. And what's happened in the meantime is that many chapters have found themselves locked out of any sort of activity because they don't have access to funds. Now, of course, the board can give anybody funds, but we want to do this in a much more sustainable way. If the IRS or the EU tax authorities come to us, they have a thing called compliance. And part of that compliance is to demonstrate that we are spending money on outcomes. We're not just about spending money. We need to demonstrate that for the 80 something percent that is spent on program, what did we get out of it? At the moment, we don't have a very good um, story to tell them, only that we're spending money and that is not good enough. And so what we're gonna be doing is we will be reforming finances and it'll be the substantial reform that will last at least five and preferably the next 20 years. We're going to be coming into a standard nonprofit model each of the areas will end up with their own part of the mission. They will be responsible for some of the funding for that, and they'll be responsible for some of the spending for that. And so what this means is balances, as we know them, for chapters and projects will go away. It means that committees for the first time will actually have a budget that they can spend, but they need to spend it on mission. Now, we can only spend money if we fundraise. And this is another aspect of the OWASP Foundation that we haven't done in the past. We've done most of our income through events and that has worked in the good times. Unfortunately, as COVID has demonstrated, this does not work in the bad times. We need to diversify our funds, not only geographically, but also across all the different types of mission that we do. To rely and fund all of the other activities off the back of two or three global events isn't sustainable. For us to grow, and when once, once COVID is over and everyone's back to normal, we need to be in a much stronger position to earn funds in a many different ways. And in the meantime, those many different ways will help OWASP survive. We're not looking for a, a windfall here. We're looking for a way forward that diversifies our income from over 85% from income sources to where events are probably no more than 30 to 35% of our income. And the only way for us to do that is massive reform of finance. So the way that this will work is we are going to end balances. I have been discussing this with the large regional events and we've got general agreement. I now need to have town halls with the chapters because they are the most affected because they have the most funds. However, this does not mean that chapters will lose access to funding. Actually, to the contrary, it'll be a lot simpler. The expenses policy going forward will be if two leaders approve an expense and you have a receipt, it's approved. There's, no, there's not gonna be any discussion about what is and is not a reasonable expense because I'm expecting you to be um, responsible. If the IRS comes calling and says, what was this expense? I'm going to redirect them towards you. We don't necessarily need to complicate this overly much. I want to make it easier for every chapter all over the world to hold events, local events, regional events. And the only way for that to happen is for chapters to become chapters, not chapters with events. Because what was happening was we were putting you know, restrictions on projects that weren't there for chapters. And we were putting restrictions on chapters that were restricting activities. For example, a, um, a San Diego chapter leader wanted to do a podcast using AV level broadcast equipment and that is fantastic. 
I love the idea of podcasting. I love the idea of getting together like with the Joe Rogan type show. That is exactly the sort of thing that OWA should be spending its money on, but it's not a chapter expense. And so we basically could not approve it under the current funding mechanism, yet we want to do that. We should be telling ourselves what we should be able to do, not what we can't do. And so the finance reform will turn this around. So how will it work? The board will allocate to each of the committees a certain amount of money to spend throughout the year. They will use that funding through budget requests. They will submit budgets before the end of the year, and they will then spend that throughout the year on the things they want to do. Additionally, individual projects and individual chapters will be able to do whatever they um, want within the expenses policy. The expenses policy during COVID is extraordinarily simple. If it's less than $250 and two of you agree and you have a receipt, it's good to go. However, I want you to do it on the things that you're actually doing. You cannot spend chapter funds on non-chapter expenses. You can't spend project funds on non-project things because we have a different way of doing it now. Soon, there will be a thing called grants. We will have a bunch of new things we are going to go through and create grants, awards, scholarships, travel, and a whole bunch of other things to make things possible. This will actually allow everyone from chapters to fund activities for events, which will be their own profit and loss uh, mechanisms. They can spend their profits on funding the mission. For example, a, um, an event such as AppSec Cali may wish to fund activities within its local chapter sphere of influence, just as they do today. That's not gonna be stopped. What will be done is instead is that they will have to put up grants and ask for things. So for example, that camera, that AV thing, AppSec Cali could absolutely um, fund that particular request if they chose to do so. So could the outreach committee. And that's what I'm trying to get at. We need to be able to say to various people within our organization, yes, you can, not no. So we're going to be doing a lot of different things over the next couple of months. And you are very welcome to provide your feedback on Slack, through email, through the um, leaders list, and through the town halls. Please do participate because without people assenting to these changes, it won't work. What cannot stay is the current situation where balances are holding back the vast majority of our mission. And particularly during COVID, we are spending so little money because so few people are allowed to spend money. And that's not okay. We need to fix this. Yes, next year, we won't have a large allocation of funds, but the reality is once we get back to the good years, we'll be able to fund a lot more than we do today because we have the ability to have money moving. We will be asking for people to do fundraising and donations. We will be asking for, uh, for OWAS to be remembered in your wills if you wish to do so. Um, we will be funding sponsorships, scholarships, awards, and things like that. So if you want to actually set up a piece of work as a project leader, say for example, the ZAP project, which is to um, you know, get every single ASVS uh, test at level one to be a GitHub action. And that will cost say $150,000 we can set up a grant to let that happen. And then we can go out and fundraise and get that happening. And then we can get people who are actually building this app project to build that functionality. And that's what we're trying to get is actually more mission activity, not less. We're also going to go towards monthly memberships. At the moment, it is actually very difficult for some people to justify a $50 expense in the time of COVID. Whereas a $6 a month expense is definitely doable. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up monthly memberships and including for regional memberships. So for the first time, we'll have regional membership pricing for not only students, but for individual members, but also lifetime members. Recently, the board approved complementary leadership. And so what this will mean is if you're an active leader, you will get complementary membership for a year. You don't have to take that up, but it's actually coming. So there's a lot of reforms coming that will actually make OWAS a lot better from the community's point of view. The only downside for some is that there will be accountability and there will be transparency. We must be able to demonstrate to the tax authorities that we are spending on mission and we are doing it so 
in such a way that is responsible and has deliberate outcomes. If we fund something for $50,000 or $10,000 or $250, there is an outcome attached to it. We're not just giving money away. And that transparency is a core value of OWASP. We've always had this transparency and sometimes it causes us difficulties, but the reality is we're not gonna go away from being transparent. If you have an expense, expect it to be visible to the community if they choose to go look. This is why I think the new expense policy will work, not because people might abuse it, but because people know that they could be reviewed by their peers and people could ask questions, was that really a good idea in spending that money? But it will also allow our donors to actually view the sorts of things that we're spending our money on. And so if someone at Charity Navigator comes to us and says, well, show us your program spending, I can actually then open the books and deliberately show them. And we don't need to do that in the form of restricted donations. We can do that deliberately in unrestricted donations, which gets more money for the mission. If we do restricted donations, there's a lot of overhead for that. And in fact, if you give us a restricted donation for $1,000, the project or chapter or grant or whatever will only get $800 of that. And that's simply because of the overheads. And we, as a foundation, wouldn't even make money on that. We would actually lose some of that money. Restricted donations are incredibly awful and we have to spend them within the year that we receive them. And so if there's a multi-year effort, for example, writing the next version of the developer guide and someone gives us a restricted donation, the reality is it goes away at the end of the year. And then all of a sudden the project has no more money. That isn't what we want. We want to have a situation where unrestricted gifts helps everybody and not just one project but we have transparency for our donors. So event reform is going to be absolutely critical. We have so many different types of events at the moment. We have over seven different types. We're going to collapse that to local events, which are essentially always going to be free. As a chapter, as a project, as a committee, you are welcome to run a local event. And as long as the event is free, you will have access to the expenses policy and you can access our virtual um, activities such as um, having access to Zoom. Uh, we have a 1,000 seat Zoom room with webinar facilities. So you can host even the largest of events through our stuff for free. We are going to have a rebranding um, campaign for all other regional events because we have so many different forms of them at the moment. What we're gonna be doing is calling them AppSec days, no matter if they're a single day or multiple days. And what this will mean is there will be one event type and anybody, projects, chapters, events, um, committees, anyone can run a regional event. And what this will mean is that the same set of rules will apply to all. And it will be a lot simpler. There will be a budget for virtual, a budget for small to medium events and a budget for large events. And if you're not a, a large event, your budget time, the time to actually turn up a, um, and create a budget that works, that is profitable, which is a key element for us, will take you probably 10 to 15 minutes. Whereas at the moment, it can take a long time. It can take a long time to plan an event and we don't want to be in having such an amazing amount of overhead. We're also going to be reforming the way that the foundation works here. There used to be splits of 90-10. Um, what will happen is that these events will get 100% of the proceeds, but the actual things the foundation provides for you will be provided to you for a fee. For example, you will need insurance to run a in-person event, particularly if you're serving alcohol. We have to do this for whatever reason, but we can do it very cheaply. And in fact, we generally don't get charged additional funds for that, but there will be a rate card available for the event, for the services that we provide regional events. You don't have to use us for most of them, but if you do want things like merchandise or swag, or you want to have um, for us to do promotions for you um, or get you sponsors, they will be available for a reasonable fee. And that way that the actual events will be their own profit and loss. The only restriction we'll have is that you need to make a small profit. It can be $1, but as long as it's $1, we're okay. Um, events that lose money will not get approved. So we just need to make sure that people are aware of this. Generally events make money hand over fist and we expect folks to actually set these things up for the benefit of the foundation to do more mission. That doesn't mean 
for the foundation to get 30 or 40 employees, far from it. What we're really looking forward is for more mission activities. Instead of 20 or 30 regional events a year, I want 100, I want 200. I'd love to be in a position where we can actually hire more people to help with regional events, but we can't do that without reforming events. We do want to have more AppSec days globally, and that means in different regions. And we are trying to get one up in um, the Asia Pacific region. Uh, we are looking very seriously at running a global event in Australia next year. We are looking very seriously at running a, a big event in India next year as well. But in likelihood, we are going to be running virtual events. And during this time, regional events can be virtual and you just simply need to talk to us about getting access to Zoom and we can get you going in a no time flat. So please, if you do have an idea for a great um, uh, event, start putting it together. Ask us for a budget and we'll get those to you once we've done the reform. Fundraising, donations and sponsorships are the lifeblood of every nonprofit. The fact that OWASP hasn't done it to this point is I think a little bit, um, we've missed a, an opportunity. We need to do these things. And if you've got any um, um, passion for OWASP and you wanna help with fundraising or donations, or you can be in a position to become a corporate sponsor or an event sponsor, please do so. Um, we need to diversify our funding we need to go out and get grants from governments and from organisations to fund our mission. To do this, we're actually going to be doing a sponsorship deck and we will be basically making sure that people who are traditionally good at giving restricted grants would be satisfied with an unrestricted grant. We will still have restricted grants available for those who must have them, but we will only uh, be having 25 of them. And generally, they will be for a substantial sum of money because of the overhead. We will not be doing restricted donations for small sums of money because generally the entire uh, restricted donation under $1,000 will just simply be eaten up in fees. And these are not OWASP fees. These are admin tax overhead fees. We just can't do them. Um, so for the mission to be funded, we need for as many of them to be unrestricted as possible. So do look for fundraising drives, membership drives, and all forms of donorship, um, like for example, with the Wikipedia, with them things saying, um, please give us money or the NPR, um, you know, donation-a-thon type of deal. We are going to do that in 2021. And please do um, reshare and retweet this information. If you are in a position to become a corporate sponsor, please do so. Um, we need everybody to come help OWAS over this next couple of years. As we move away from um, a very simplistic but very difficult um, expenses policy where people had to have money uh, to do things, we are going to be formalising how awards are given and how scholarships are granted. And what this means is if, say, for example, we want to reinstate the WASPI awards, which we do want to do, we will be under this same policy. And what this will do is it allows anyone, a committee, a project, an event, to award a prize or some sort of reward under known circumstances to a set of people. And what this will mean is that we will have transparency in awards for the first time. What are the selection criteria? How was it decided? What sort of funding was required? Same with scholarships. We will be moving away from a complementary leadership model um, where uh, leaders were automatically eligible for a large number of free things, but our lifetime members were not. What we're gonna be doing is actually using the scholarships model to provide places for those who need to have access to these things who wouldn't have necessarily had access before, but under a fair and reasonable mechanism. If say, for example, we have a hundred spots available for leaders, they will be available to all leaders, regardless of where they are in the world. And you just have to be one of the first. Whereas for example, we might have a scholarship for um, someone from say, for example, an underdeveloped country to come to a global AppSec and there will be a, a, some travel and obviously some hotel accommodation and other expenses attached. How do they apply? Well, that'll be open and it will be well advertised. This is part of that transparency we're looking for so that we can actually go and get it funded. There are going to be plenty of folks out there who would actually be interested in funding some of these scholarships. And lastly, grants. 
This is going to be the fundamental mechanism for getting our mission done from here on in. Generally, people will come up with packages to be developed into a deliverable, um, and we will be looking for who's going to do it, by when, and how much will it cost, and what sort of opportunities could be there for sponsorship or some sort of grant mechanism so that we can get funding for it. For example, a chapter may want to sponsor a grant to give someone in their chapter a training spot at the, a global AppSec. That's what this is for, okay? So the grants will go through the audit committee to get approved, but fundamentally the community will be running the grants process. This is gonna be really important for us because at the moment it's very opaque as to how people get money. And in, although it was somewhat known that the board would group grants to people if they had a specific thing they wanted to do, the reality is it was so rarely used, it wasn't funny. We need to move away from the idea of expenses funding absolutely everything to expenses being more like petty cash and grants as actual outcomes. So do think about ways that you might want to repackage your work as a series of grants that we could go and get funded for you so you can get some work done. We are finally saying the end of this is what you're not allowed to do. That vocabulary at OWASP is dead. We are saying what you can do in a nice, transparent and equitable way. So the call to action, become a member. It's $50 a year in many countries. It's $20 a year in most other countries that aren't 50. Um, we will be having monthly membership soon, which will just be a subscription. Um, we will be providing subscription-based lifetime memberships so that after a period of time, maybe one to two years, we're not terribly sure yet, we'll work on that and announce it when it's the appropriate time, that you can become a lifetime member. Um, please become a sponsor. We have so many benefits. We have a community of over 60,000 people who are the direct consumers of the things that are in our industry. For example, static code analysis tools. Very few other people have that reach. Please do think about becoming a sponsor. We have an amazing community and I really want um, for that community to have benefits. So if you can provide and become a sponsor, um, we are looking at becoming, uh, creating a corporate advisory board, but we're also looking for discounts for our members for your products. So think about ways that sponsors can work in both directions. There's a lot of different benefits. And if you are interested, please reach out to me or Kelly Santalucia. You can create or join a project. And I would strongly recommend this. This is how I got into OWASP all those years ago uh, by helping out the OWASP developer guide. And it's done an amazing thing for my career. Please do join projects. If you've got an idea for a project, have a look and make sure there's no other projects like yours because maybe you could help them. But if you haven't found it, create one. You can create or join a local chapter. At this moment, we are only hosting virtual events. And so if you're a chapter leader, please hold virtual events. If there's no local chapter near you, please create one. Then within 80 kilometers of your local uh, area, about 50 miles and legacy units, um, we won't generally create local chapters, but in a virtual time, it doesn't really matter where you are and you can hold a local chapter. And we are looking at doing things like theming chapters and having regional chapters again. Regional chapters have been abandoned for a long time because they're almost, un they don't really work. We're working on trying to fix that. So do hold virtual events. If you want to hold a virtual chapter um, around a theme such as leadership or um, for example, DevOps or whatever the case may be, you can become the specialist chapter for that and get a lot more people coming than just your local area. Do think out of the box for those things while we're in this virtual world. Do organize AppSec days in your area. Again, we have virtual options available to you. We can have up to 12 simultaneous streams. We have access to um, a lot of different activities and we're obviously able to run a large event like this with no issues whatsoever. Do talk to us about how you might be able to run a local event in your area. Lastly, you can join committees in the global board. As we move towards a DevSecOps type of OWAS instead of where we are at the moment, committees in the global board helps direct where we're gonna spend our energy and time. The community, therefore you, can join both of those things. The global board, the election is upon us right now. 
If you are interested, just make sure you've got uh, continuous membership for 12 months and then stand for the board. It's a really interesting um, thing. It did me amazing um, from my own business development and it actually made it possible for me to be the executive director. So I'm easily found on the internet. It's very easy to make contact with me. Um, I do run office hours. If you use the link there, you can find um, links to um, half an hour, 45 minute and 60 minute meetings. Um, I'm available on Vanderay Jane almost everywhere. It's got social media. Um, and of course, um, VanderayJ at OWASP.com. Feel free to contact me at any time if you have any concerns and I welcome you to this uh, conference. Thank you.